ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗ್ಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ದಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ರೇಸ್ ಆನ್ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ ಅರ್ಥ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ಯಾರಲಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ರೀಡ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ and desire is the poison that ruins your spiritual life that ruins your happiness just see how it works desire means i am not complete in the present moment i want something in the future that is now separate from me but i want to bring it close to me or i want to become that you see so one denies one's wholeness in the present and creates a tension between the present and the future that i shall become this or i shall obtain this or whatever it is i will get this thing in the future so any kind of tension like this obstructs the natural free flow of the energy in the universe it's a kind of effort and effort means ego so you see where this is going the more desire you have the more tension there is the more obstruction to the natural flow creating a vortex which is the ego which is an unnatural thing it's a diseased condition actually and it leads to so much suffering because then one comes responsible for the karma generated by the actions in service to the ego and the ego doesn't even really exist it's just software it's so pathetic so people are bound by this desire they're trapped by the desire for this and for that for so many things most of which are completely unnecessary human beings lived on this planet and had just a fine quality of life until of course all the wars huh at the end of the dwapara yuga 5000 years ago all the qualified kings were killed in the battle of kurukshetra leaving only rogues and thieves and rascals who out of greed naturally took over the positions of power there was a power vacuum so all these highly self-motivated self-interested selfish greedy rascals rushed in to take over those positions so this is what we have now uh, kleptocracy the, the so called leaders are the ones who are stealing from the people and enriching themselves and their friends isn't it and this is going on everywhere all over the world one country will become rich for a while you know for a while it was portugal 300 years ago something like that and the portuguese and the dutch came after them and then in those days the the dutch guilder was the international standard currency and then the british the british took over from the dutch and the british pound became the world currency and now it's the us but the same end happens to all of them because they generate so much bad karma by their selfish greedy actions eventually the whole thing collapses and there's tremendous suffering because everyone has become dependent everyone has become used to the stability of this empire 
based on greed and exploitation of nature and other people. And then when the karma catches up to it and it falls apart, everyone is invested up to here huh? and their money suddenly becomes worthless and all their credits can't be collected and so on. It's just a big disaster. It's happening to the U.S. now, but it happened to Britain in the World War II era, and it happened to the Dutch around the turn of the 20th century, and it happened to the Portuguese before that and the French before that, and going back, back, back in history. You can see it happened everywhere in the world. So what is this greed? What is this desire? What is this sickness? that causes people to give up everything wholesome and good, natural and pure, and create artificial empires of, of words, basically, abstractions, designations, positions and names, and then build huge buildings based on these different conceptions, capitalism, monarchism, socialism, communism, whateverism. It's just greed, entitlement. One person thinks, I deserve to have more than everybody else. And if they're strong enough, then they get it for a little while. But you see, fortune is called Lakshmi. And one of Lakshmi's names is Chanchala. The Chanchala means wandering. She's never happy to stay in one place. <laughs> so when fortune comes, it's only temporary. But the price for gaining this fortune, huh? any material opulence, whether it's money or power or fame or beauty or even knowledge or renunciation in a religious context, these are all material opulences that have to be attained at great effort. And because of that, there's ego connected with them. Now, if these things come without effort, then it means it's your karma. And you should accept that. And then continue it as your duty in life. For example, if someone is born into a royal family and is a prince and becomes later on a king and accepts so much inherited wealth and so on like that, it's his karma. He deserves it by the law of nature. But if someone goes out and struggles and fights to gain wealth or to become a king, you see, that's ego. So what happened 5,000 years ago is that the way of becoming powerful or famous in society, instead of being hereditary, became a matter of individual struggle. Even marriage in Western culture is the result of a huge effort where one has to go through so many potential partners and dating and so oh, it's a big mess, you know, it's painful. But like here in India, marriages are arranged by the families. And it's like a partnership between two families that is uh, made sacred through the marriage bond. It's a much better system. How I wish I had been born into that system instead of the Western system. It was horrible. But here I see people are so much happier because they get actually compatible mates. Everybody is checked out by a competent astrologer and they get a mate that is actually suited for them and so on. But let's go even beyond that. Even if the society is fair and just and runs according to the laws of the scripture, the Varnashram Dharma, uh, the four orders of spiritual life, and the four classes of occupation, even if someone is following this, they still can be overcome by desire. And because of that, they lose their chance for liberation. 
Desire is the poison. It makes us unhappy from the very beginning. And then it also takes away our potential, our opportunity for enlightenment. Because one who is overcome with desire can't meditate, uh, the mind is too disturbed. They're always thinking of their desire and the objects and their struggle and who they have to conquer to gain it. Oh, it's such a mess, it's horrible. But if one is simply happy with what comes of its own accord, with a minimal effort, minimal struggle, then desire can be given up. It can be given up completely. And this is what sannyas is all about. Sannyas means renunciation. It's the fourth stage of life. After childhood and education, then marriage and family life, then retired life, then finally sannyas or renounced life is the final stage. And according to the Vedic Dharma, one is supposed to take sannyas at the age of 50, if not before. But one should be very cautious not to take sannyas while one still has material desires. Otherwise, to fall down from sannyas is a great sin and can result in going to hell, literally. I know so many sannyasis, so-called sannyasis, who have fallen down, you know, who have uh, taken money, stolen money from a spiritual organization, and then gone, got married and had families. They got what they wanted by the pious results of their uh, small amount of service that they did devotion and religious activities and so on. They got what they wanted, but what they wanted was not really the best thing. It was the booby prize. Huh? It's an American expression for those of you <laughs> who don't know it. When kids have some competition in school, they give the winners, you know, the, the regular prize, but then they give the losers some insignificant prize so that they give them something to console them. And this is called the booby prize. <laughs> so material opulence and gain, power, wealth, fame, beauty, all these things, knowledge, renunciation even, is the booby prize. Especially if one has to struggle and make great efforts to attain it. If it comes naturally of its own accord, then fine, it's meant for you. It's your karma, it's your destiny. But if you have to make efforts, you're simply building the ego and you're creating karma for the next life. You'll have to be born again in another body to receive that karma. So be very cautious about desires. You already have a body. You already have karma for this life that you can't change. That destiny is there. You can make efforts and struggle against it, but that's only going to increase your karmic burden in the next life. Better to simply accept what is coming to you by the karma and make the best of it so that you can make spiritual progress toward enlightenment. See, this is the actual purport of the Vedic Dharma. Don't stay in family life your whole life. Don't stay in business or don't remain in politics. Don't even be like a religious person or a sannyasi teacher or something like that. But when you take sannyas, try to reach a state of non-doing, of complete surrender. And in this state only, the ultimate truth will be revealed to you. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.